Representative Dale Falwell, why would this bill effectively get its own special session? Because it's dominated all the other discussion. Sure. Well, this bill, the Defense of Marriage, is not getting its own special session. When we uh, set out this year with Speaker Tillis, you know, he had big goals and, and short deadlines. And we wanted to get the business of North Carolina done before the end of the fiscal year, adjourn, which we did, come back and do a special session on redistricting, which we have to do every 10 years, and then come back and do the, uh, the session we're doing this week on constitutional amendments. It's not just the defense of marriage, but also term limits for the Speaker, the President pro tem, and some other things that were also going to be considered like the eminent domain and, and uh, powers of the Superintendent of Board of Instruction. Would the gay marriage amendment bill Republicans say, or most of them say, let the people decide this one up or down? Democrats say North Carolinians don't want it. What are North Carolinians telling you? Well, what North Carolinians are telling us across geographic lines, generational lines, racial lines, political party lines, and even economic lines, that people have a definition in their mind of what marriage is between one man and one woman. But the Constitution, which is a living document, was designed to be amendable. And the forefathers of North Carolina said that there are some decisions that are bigger than 120 members of the House or 50 senators. Those decisions belong to the people of this state. I've heard two different arguments. Critics will say, yeah, you're going after gay folks. They're not hurting anybody if they want to get married. And another uh, other side says, you know, if we don't do this now with the amendment, a court could step in and change the law. Absolutely. Is it, that, is it, is it on that much of an edge? It, it, it's on that much of an edge. We are not reinventing the wheel. I don't care how people choose to live their life, but your viewers need to understand that North Carolina has been sanctioning marriage since the 1600s, even before North Carolina was a state. We sanction it through who we say can perform services. We sanction it in requiring people to get marriage permits. We sanction it in terms of how we write our tax code, our tax laws, our real estate laws, our state laws. If, nor, if the state is going to sanction marriage in that way and, have done, and has done that for hundreds of years, then it needs to protect it. What the certainty issue is this, is that you would not want a law that says marriage is between one man and one woman to be overturned by some activist judge because there's so much in the real estate law, the tax law, and the estate law of North Carolina that would really set North Carolina up on, on the end. The second thing is by doing this, I think it cements the freedom that businesses have to decide what kind of benefits they want to offer to their employees regardless of, what, how, of, of anything else. That this will bring certainty to that issue. Businesses will be able to determine what kind of benefit packages they want to offer and, and who they want to offer them to without the interfer interference of the government or the uncertainty of the government going forward. Can they not do that now in North Carolina? They can do that, but let's say that somebody sued on the law that is currently in this book and an activist judge comes back and says, well, you have to offer it to everybody or to no one. Well, businesses, that takes away business freedom. This will bring certainty to this issue, certainty to the business climate of North Carolina, settle it once and for all politically and move on to the things that we have been concentrating on all year, which is jobs, jobs, jobs. House Speaker Pro Tim Dale Falwell, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you.